Hey guys, it's Sam and today I want to do a little book haul. I no longer accrue books at such a rate that I can really do monthly book hauls at all. So now I'm more on like a seasonal, here's the books that I recently got. Once I get a big enough stack, I'll do a book haul. Although my birthday is coming up in August, so there'll definitely probably be a book haul for that. Also, if you haven't seen more recent videos where I look like this, I am still recovering from COVID. I did catch COVID for the first time, finally, don't know how. Um, and so I've been recovering for the last couple of weeks, still really tired, but if I sound a little like, uh, it's because this is the first day I felt well enough to like do content stuff, which I wanted to do. It's so hard to do things when you're fatigued and it's, it's hard because you want to, but you don't wear yourself out and you need to take it easy. But like I had a bunch of reading stuff that I wanted to talk about. Here is my most recent stack of books I've gotten over the last handful of months. So first are two books that I was sent from a friend here on YouTube. They were very sweet and saw that I mentioned I was sick and they were like, I'm gonna send you a care package. And I'm like, you are very kind. So the first is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. This is a book that I've been seeing all around, mostly on TikTok, honestly. Uh, and this is a adult dark academia standalone. And people have been saying like, it's amazing, one of the best ones. So I'm looking forward to this. There's been a couple of flops for me recently for dark academia. Looking at you, the Atlas Six and the Book of Night. So I'm thinking this will be much more up that alley and yeah, it's, it's much more what I'm looking for out of a dark academia. The second book was A Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark, which was perfect timing because I'm needing to read this for the Hugo nominations. So I'll be reading this sooner rather than later. This is the first book in what I think is gonna be a trilogy or a series. I mean, it's kind of already a series. This world started out in short stories and now this is the first novel within this world. And this takes place in a magical Cairo around 1920. I recently read one of the short stories in this, The a Dead Jinn in Cairo, um, because apparently that has like a crossover character or whatever, just to see if I would like the writing style, and I definitely did, so I'm really looking forward to this. And I need to read it sooner rather than later anyway, because of the Hugo nominations, I have about a month left. As of the filming of this, I will have less time by the time you guys are seeing this, so this is definitely one that I'm excited to get to. Then I was sent A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers. This is the second book in the Robot and the Tea Monk, I think is like the name of the novella series. I don't know if it's gonna be more than two books. People have been talking about this as a duology, but I think it's supposed to be more, I don't know. But the first book was was a song for the Wild Belt. It follows a teen monk who's essentially a therapist having a bit of a quarter life crisis. They go off into the wilderness and they are found by a robot and robots have sort of become mythological creatures because they used to be a part of society and then like years ago they just went out into the woods and like disappeared and now people basically don't even really feel like they were real anymore. And they kind of team up. So this is just a continued exploration of that and like what goes on with that. This is Becky Chambers like hope punk world again. Like she just does these very like quiet, character-driven, cozy type sci-fi stories. So this is a continuation of that. Another arc I got is Nona the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. I'm kind of stunned that I got this, but also I do crow from the rooftops about this series a lot. This is the third book in the Locked Tomb series, the first book being Gideon the Ninth, which this, the series, people call it lesbian necromancers in space, which really distills it down to like not even its main points. But this is a wacky, a so out there necromancer series that has some very heavy sapphic themes without it being necessarily always blatant and is weird and a mind fuck. And this one is definitely gonna be that. This is one of the only series that I don't plan on rereading the previous book, Harrow the Ninth, because Harrow the Ninth was such a mind fuck that I'm like, I was already confused reading that one, so going into this, like not remembering some things will probably be fine because that was so wild. Masterfully done wild. Crazy bone shit wild, but wild. So I'm definitely looking forward to this. This does come out in September, which is probably when I'll get around to it, like late August, early September, honestly, just because now I'm doing the Hugo stuff. <laughs> but I can't wait. Then I was also reached out to and sent this book because it sounded right up my alley and it's from a publisher that I don't usually work with and I hadn't really heard a lot about. Saint Death's Daughter by C.S.E. Cooney. This sounds, again, wacky and wild. We have a main character who is the daughter of an assassin. She has necromantic powers, but she has an actual allergy to violence. And her best friend is a revenant, like a revenant ghost. Then her parents are murdered and her and her, it says in here, psychotic sister. <laughs> I have to try to balance the debt so they don't lose the home and lose the revenant because the revenant's like tied to the home. And so she ends up having to like figure out how to like work through this debt, but she also has the goddess of death on her side. This sounds so wild and I am so here for it. It has so many things that sound like so cool and interesting and like self-aware. I don't know if it's gonna be funny, like I don't know. 
but I'm excited about this. I might be waiting until closer to spooky season to read this. I'm already kind of like planning my spooky TBR because usually you guys know every year spooky season rolls around and I'm like not ready. I'm going to be ready this year. I have a plan of which books are going to be on that spooky TBR and spooky season for me will start like I think it's September so I have enough time. This might be in spooky season. Then I have a number of books that I picked up myself. The first is The First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis. This is the first book in a adult space opera story. I do not know a ton about this. I've heard about like mutterings about it here and there, but this is actually on um, this month's pick for the House Salt Book Club. So we'll be talking about this in a live show end of this month, beginning of next. For stories like this, like sometimes I just don't even need to go into it knowing much. Like someone recommended it one time and I knew from the description that I was gonna like it. I read the description once and then it went out of my head. And that's how I tend to like to go into books, as you guys know. Then I also picked up The City We Became by M.K. Jemison. If you saw my, did I do a bookstore vlog? I don't know if I did, actually. I might talk about it on TikTok, honestly. I went to one of my favorite bookstores. This was on the sale shelf. Do not know why. You can see the sticker on here I need to take off. I don't know why, nothing's wrong with this. Um, but this was the first book in the, I think it's just called The Cities Duology, um, which it's like a apocalyptic, I think, sort of like urban fantasy set in New York. The end of the world's coming, people have to team up, kind of. But between this and the Inheritance Trilogy, these are the only books from N.K. Jemisin's list that I have not yet read. So I am looking forward to getting to this. And the last book is a book that I just stumbled upon in a little free library. There are so many little free library booths around my neighborhood, like probably 12 or more. And that is The Complete Collection of Binti by Nadia Korfor. So this is a series that I've actually, like, started. I listened to Binti, well, actually, I listened to, like, two and a half of the novellas, of the three novellas but then I was like not connecting to it necessarily. I listened to the first, so let me just kind of go over this. I listened to the first book, the first novella, uh, like I think possibly late last year, maybe it was this year, I don't remember. I really liked it. The audiobook narration is like fantastic. I listened to the second one, but I found myself spacing out a lot. Like I typically listen to audiobooks on walks when I'm not super focused on anything else. And I found myself spacing out and I don't really like remember a lot that happened in that one. I think I finished it. But I don't even know if I marked it as finished, to be honest. And then I started the third book, and I was like, I don't know what's going on. So I'm actually going to try to read it, either um, immersion read it, where like, I'm listening to the audiobook and reading at the same time, or just read it and see. Um, again, I like the audiobook a lot. Like, it's really good narration, but I think there's something, certain accents, and she has like a, I don't even know what part of Africa. Like, she has like a, I want to say, it's, I want to say she's West African, so I feel like she writes East African. I forget. She has a really beautiful accent, the narrator, uh, because the characters have those accents. Some accents honestly lull me to sleep, and that's like that's a good thing, but it's not a good thing for audiobook narration. Like some accents are just too soothing to me for me to even focus. So my brain just like checks out because I'm like, oh, that's so beautiful. But then you're not paying attention to the words. So I think that's what's happening here. So I think I've already read the first book. I think I'm just gonna read two and three to finish up this novella series. And I didn't know they had a bind up like this and then it was in my little free library. So I'm going to drop off some other books and I'm going to be unhauling to kind of give back to that little free library since I took this one. I didn't even say uh, this is a adult sci-fi series, uh, sci-fi novella series where our main character in the first book is going away to a uh, like science college in another planet and her family's like not really on board with that and then something happens on the ship on her way there and kind of like puts her on a different trajectory. So a lot of discussions of like culture and cross culture and like all this stuff with um, different like aliens and things. So yeah, that is it for all the books that I've gotten recently. Comment down below and let me know if you've read any of these books and what you've thought of them or let me know any books that you've gotten recently. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon.